setup is actually the first prototype that NASA built, but the researchers here at Ames found it uh, a bit heavy and cumbersome, particularly as in a real outer space environment, everything would be weightless anyway. So they're working now with the same electronics, but in a much lighter and easier to use form. The optics of the system are designed to try to match as closely as possible uh, human binocular vision. So in this little box in the front here, they've got a set of LED arrays which provide the light for uh, two liquid crystal displays which are then viewed through these wide-angle lenses that provide a stereoscopic view of the computer-generated image. Now, it's hooked up via these cables here to uh, a computer which is an extremely powerful 3D graphics image generator. But to show you some of the fantastic and rather amazing things that it can do, I'm going to need a little bit of help from Scott Fisher, the project scientist. Well, Scott, let's see how it works. Okay, Ian, this is a fairly simple database. There are a set of escalators that are life-size. So, And if you take a few steps over to the one on the left yes. and get on it just as you would a, a real escalator. I see. So uh, here I'm standing. I okay, see. you're on it now. That should take you up it's to the second me up. floor. <laughs> what happens when I go through the top? Oh, nothing. <laughs> Now, oh, you can just, now I turn you around. You can turn around and see, look back down to the first floor oh, yes. where you came from. Oh, I see. Careful, don't, <laughs> don't fall. fall. Okay, so and now I'm going down again. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and now I, now I walk off. <laughs> wow, that's amazing. Okay, this is another uh, input device that we put together. This is an instrumented glove. The functions of the moving hand are crucial for the development of natural and easy ways of controlling robots in space and getting them to perform many of the more difficult and dangerous tasks in the vacuum of space. Okay, now that I have the display on... Here, the glove is moving in an accurate, real-time, 3D representation of the room we're standing in. So that I can, for example, make a two-finger pointing gesture and then I can move around in the database and use the glove to interact with some of the virtual objects we've generated. Now I'm moving up above the room and then I can look back down onto the room. <laughs> Looking down and then I can point back down into the room and uh, land in a different spot. In the virtual environment of the space station, you find yourself suspended in space well beyond the main structure in the vicinity of a satellite, another floating astronaut, and the space shuttle. Again, it's the wireframe images, although new software under development will provide solid images. Why is it important to, to have this sort of automated movement and robots um, doing these sort of things? Uh, for one thing, it's a fairly dangerous uh, and time-consuming operation to have the astronauts suit up to go outside space station. Uh, for another thing, there'll be much fewer operators up there, uh, and we're trying to build enough robots that uh, can control many different tasks outside, do routine things that we don't want the astronauts to waste their time on. Now, ultimately, when you're using these robots, of course, the, uh, presumably the operator will be seeing what the robot sees, not computer-generated um, images like these. You'll see a combination of both. The robots have uh, very small stereo cameras mounted on their heads. We'd like to get a smaller display that's uh, very portable so that someone uh, literally floating around in zero-g uh, in space station or even working from uh, ground control could put on a display, put on a set of gloves, uh, have the speech input device, and literally uh, control the robot arm and end effectors in a one-to-one -one correspondence if need be. One of the most startling possibilities for the new system is that it could be developed to a stage where a person requiring surgical procedures on the space station could be operated on by a robot, with the surgeon on Earth doing the whole thing by remote control through the virtual environment headgear and instrumented gloves. There's not much doubt that NASA attaches great importance to the development of virtual environment systems like this because of their future potential in the real and somewhat hazardous environment of space. But uh, it's difficult to avoid the feeling that they'd be just great for video games.
Good. Well, that treatment was just to take away my stress and tension, which we certainly encounter in a TV studio, and indeed I do feel very relaxed now. The trouble is, though, many people have a distinct aversion to needles, or they just...